Welcome back trainers and today we are going to be doing our first Ultra League Battles of Season 9. We're going to be going into the remix and testing out a level 50 Pidgeot with a legacy quick move wing attack. And we're going to be going with Feather Dance and Brave Bird. And then we're also going to be pairing it up with Machamp. As far as the third Pokemon, we're going to kind of play around with it and see what we, what we can do. And eventually we're going to be landing on Typhlosion. Machamp and Pidgeot as the team. It worked out pretty nice. We're going to be bringing back the old Typhlosion. This thing is amazing. Uh, the reason why I kind of faded away is because of Talonflame. It's basically the same, uh, kind of. I mean, it's going to be even weaker to rock. But uh, Typhlosion's always been solid as well as having that solar beam. Uh, with that said, Pidgeot was awesome. It's going to have a lot of resistances. Well, I mean, not a lot. It's going to be good up against a few certain types of Pokemon that are going to be pretty available all over the place, including Jellicent. You're going to see how a Jellicent Pidgeot battle can last a very long time. When you're going Bubble Beam, Feather Dance, and they're stuck with Shadow Ball, I don't want to hit Brave Bird because it's just going to be better off for me to just keep going with the Feather Dance instead of lowering my attack and just keep hitting them slowly but surely and win the battle. So that will be towards the end. With that said, I think that's all really I have to say here for now. I did enjoy Pidgeot. Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, I'm not trying to say it's bad, but it's quite a steep investment. It, it did what it needed to do. If you have the resources to do so and you wanted to test it out, you have a good one. By all means, be my guest. You're not going to be too disappointed. Uh, as far as the quick move, though, I haven't tested out, um, the other one, Gust. So I'm not, I'm not going to TM away this legacy here. So <laughs> it's a level 50. So we're going to have to power up another one. Ain't going to happen. So you're going to just test it. I'm sure it'll be perfectly fine with Gust. But with that said, up against Typhlosion here, going to let that Blast Burn go through after we did get off a of Feather Dance. It's not doing that much damage. This move is so OP. Missing some bubbles here. Got to love it. And we're taking them out. So I did that on purpose so we can get a little extra farm there. Yeah. In comes the Machamp, and we're going to go ahead and go Feather Dance. Now, Machamp versus Pidgeot, the Shadow Machamp specifically here, you, you would think... Well, I have Wing Attack. With Wing Attack, I'm not too sure about Gus. I haven't done the Sims, but the Machamp's going to be able to pull off that win, all right? We are going to be part normal, so it is not going to be completely immune to fighting. Shadow Machamp is just OP. Anyways, we're going to be bringing in our Excadrill up against the Gengar here, taking them out. They have one shield left. They let it go because what they wanted to do is bring in the Machamp farm down. Take us out, seeing that we have one shield left. They're going to be super effective. We do go in with the Machamp and just counter down, and we take the win, one shield on both ends. Into the next battle, folks. We're going to be met with the Machamp. Here you go. Or they might retreat. So what I was noticing is a lot of people found themselves to be comfortable <laughs> up against the Pidgeot when they're bringing in that Machamp at first, and it feels kind of weird. You're fl uh, flying level 50, but they're uh, fighting, and they're just sitting in there taking you out. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and bring in our Machamp now after we uh, uh, retreated with the Pidgeot here. And oh, wow, can you, are you serious? They, they survived with 1 HP, able to get off a of Blast Burn. We survived because we did debuff their attack. But man, I, I would have really enjoyed all, you know, all that extra health. So we still do have the Excadrill on the team. Uh, we're not going to be going in there with that. We're going to shield this up. It is a cross chop. It, you know, it still does a good amount of damage as a Shadow Machamp. <laughs> The Jab is just a solid Pokemon all around. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, well, we might be able to go in here with uh, Excadrill here. And so they swap, we swap too. They get to their charge move, but we hit it at the same time. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to farm up here a little bit extra for the Machamp. Now I'm just hoping we're going to be able to take it out with our quick move, which is probably not going to happen. But they throw here, which is great. But it doesn't matter. The Pidgeot's so low, we're going to go in here. They counter us out. And they take the win with the Machamp. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's see, that Shadow Machamp is just a beast. Next battle, we're met with a Nidoqueen regular here. And this is actually pretty fine. They can't go for Earth Power unless they have a Stone Edge, which that's happened to be a few times. So, uh, you know, I feel like I may want to hit Brave Bird sometimes. And there we go. We're going to go ahead and just do that and swap into our Excadrill. They're not uh, retreating. So makes me think that they want to get off an Earth Power. Yeah, and there it is. So we're going to shield it up and farm down. Building up quite a bit of energy on the Excadrill. They're going to be coming in here with the Snorlax. 
Yeah, that's fine, I suppose. We still have Machamp in the back, but but by the time we're done with this thing, it's going to be almost fainted. So the Machamp's really not going to do too much, and they're not even using a shield. Still holding on to two. We're going to go ahead and go for Rock Slide at this point, just because that's all we really need to do to take them out. They shield it up, building up that energy, and now I feel like they're going to go for S Superpower here. So we're, they just lower their stats but they also took out an Excadrill, instantly swapping into a Escavalier. We bring in Pidgeot and then bring in our Machamp to combat this here. So I figured, okay, we're going to go ahead and build up to do Cross Chops. We're going to get that shield. We're going to take them out. In comes the Snorlax. It does not have an extra charge move ready to go. It's almost there, but we're going to do quite a bit of damage before we do go down. Then we'll bring in the Pidgeot, which still has a bunch of health left. And, well, we're resisting the Lick. So, yeah, they didn't even try. They back out. We take the win. Looking good, folks. Let's get it. All righty. On to the next battle. We're going to be met with a Scrafty. Fantastic. But again, those fighters can hold it down. They're going to be swapping into Nido Queen. We're going to go ahead and bring in that old Excadrill. And we're going to be using this for quite some time, aren't we? All right. So they let the drill run go through. But at this point, I feel like they're going to go for an Earth Power. So we're going to go ahead and shield it up. But they Poison Fang me bait. Wow. So we'll, yeah, we're going to be seeing that Scrafty come right back into battle here. We're going to go ahead and go for the Drill Run. I feel like they're going to farm me down. Probably go for a Power-Up Punch. Yeah, there's that Power-Up Punch, which is going to be doing quite a bit. They did lower our attack or our defense. So, yep, down we go. We still have a Machamp and we still have a Pidgeot. Both of them are going to be good. I decided to go ahead and bring in the Machamp since we do resist the Dark Moves. They can go ahead and go for power Punch, no problem. Swapping into an ex an Excadrill, a uh, Escavalier. And this is, this is fine. You know, we're not in the best position, not in the worst. As a matter of fact, I think we're in a pretty okay position. Swapping into Pidgeot because we do resist everything that the uh, Escavalier, I was going to call it Excadrill again. Escavalier is going to be throwing at us. Although Mega Horn does a dumb amount of damage, as you see. And we're just going to go ahead and throw that Feather Dance here to lower their attack. And they're using their last shield, putting up a fight to the bitter end. And we take the win there with our quick move. On to our next opponent, folks. If you do enjoy my video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for your new turn notifications on. And I'll be keeping you up to date. we got a few new events happening uh, regarding some new generation Pokemon, which I'll be covering soon. So we're met with another Scrafty here. As you can see, doing a lot of damage before they do go down and swapping into their Galarian Stunfisk, in which we're going to go ahead and bring in Machamp. All right, now seeing that the Machamp is also going to be good up against the Scrafty here, I'm going to go ahead and shield up that Earthquake so we can have them reveal their last Pokemon. Unless their entire team is weak to fighting, they'll probably come back in here with Scrafty, but we'll have to see here. So throw in another cross chop. We got one shield out of them and they have a Mandibuzz. So not necessarily weak to fighting, but Machamp still is going to be able to put a great amount of damage onto it, especially if we can land this rock side. Of course, they're shielding it up. We swap into our Pidgeot immediately and go for the Brave Bird. Now this is going to sharply lower our uh, defense stat, but hey, we're still doing it. And they're keep, they keep on charging here. So we go ahead and go for a Feather Dance. I'm thinking, yeah. Yes, please. I'll take it. So they retreat with energy. I see what you're doing there. And we have a Escavalier on our team now. So we took off the Excadrill. Now we're running this just for like maybe one or two battles. A double counter user. I just wanted to test it out to see if we can get that fighter to be pulled up in the front, in which we did. We successfully pulled it off, but this team in the back can be a bit troublesome. So we're going to go ahead and counter down. In comes the Mandibuzz, and we're going to be able to win this here. We do have the Aerial Ace, and that is what we're going to go for. I do believe a Drill Run at this point would be fine even as well. But we hit the Aerial Ace, and we take the win there. Looking good. All righty. On to the next one. I don't know if we're going to be still going with the Escavalier. This may be the Typhlosion time. Let's see. Escavalier still. Okay. So we're met with a... Got a Mandibuzz here. So... Uh, let's see what Pidgeot's going to be able to do up against it, hitting us with a foul play. So we're going to go ahead and just go straight Brave Bird. Now, the reason why I did that is because I kept going for the Feather Dance, and it's good and all, but I just want to do a bunch of damage. And since we're rocking a double counter user up against this Mandibuzz lead here, I figured, meh, let's go ahead and just throw the Brave Bird and then swap it to Excadrill here. If they come back in with a fire, well, yeah, I'm not going to be looking too hot, but we'll have to make do with it. So we're going to continue on. We will let this, I think we do let this go through. Yeah, we don't want to use our shield. Uh, we want them to think this is our only counter user. So they have a Jellicent back there. Now, if a Jellicent is going to be a swap, more than likely in the Ultra Remix, it will have Ice Beam. If it's a lead, maybe it will have Bubble Beam and Shadow Ball. So 
we have to just go off of them having ice beam right now so we're going to go ahead and shield it up and they do in fact have ice beam okay so we're going to be resisting the ghost moves here shadow ball is useless they might as well just keep going for the ice beam obviously uh, super effective damage and it does do a good amount as a matter of fact to us so we're going to go ahead and go for the feather dance building up extra to make them think we're going brave bird but they didn't fall for it still holding on to two shields uh let's see how much this ice beam is going to do at a zero shield at the moment here they're going to be swapping it, it does a good amount and they're going into a uh a bomb of snow so we're going to go ahead and swap into our machamp revealing our other counter user since we did lower their attack sharply we survived this, no problem. We farm down, and here we go. Can we get to it? So what I do is just go for cross chop here, because at this point, that's all it's going to take, and we're still getting the shield out of them. So we're going to go for another cross chop here. They're going to be kind of forced to throw. They can't just farm us down here, unless they build up to two ice beams. Nope, we farm down a Jellicent with counter, and a Mandibuzz. Wow, Machamp, putting in that freaking work. Let's go. What, will you resist fighting? Shadow Machamp doesn't care. All right, next battle, we're met with a Blastoise here. So Ice Beam, again, we have to look out for that. So we're going to go ahead and lower their attack so we can just take those Ice Beams, no problem. Uh, they're not getting stabbed from it. Blastoise doesn't have the best attack, but again, it is going to be super effective, of course, because we're flying. So there you go. Not bad. Since we did get a shield with the Feather Dance, now we can go ahead and go Brave Bird. If they want a double shield, that's great. We're going to go ahead and swap if they do. We're swapping anyways into Machamp. Okay. And they're bringing in a muck, so resisting the counter damage. And it is not shadow, so it is going to actually have a decent resistance to it. We're going to go for a rock slide. They're shielding it up using their last shield. And I decide to go ahead and shield up this Machamp just because I want to see if I can get off another rock slide. And if they're coming in here with muck, I wonder if there's something in the back weak to fighting. So we're going to go ahead and throw this. And I don't think we're going to double shield. Yeah, I think we're just going to go ahead and let it go. Thunder Punch is going to take us out. That's fine. And now we have Typhlosion. They swap. Okay, and it's a Lucario. GG's. No more shields. We're going to go Blast Burn. Now, since the registration damage is so slow for the uh, Incinerate, I mean, I wasn't thinking, thinking they could pull off a win because they'd have to have a heck of a lot of energy stored up on that muck. But that can be a troublesome situation. Anyways, so we're going to be seeing a swap into a Machamp up against their Pidgeot. Now, the, why did I do this? I don't... Look at the Gust damage, though. I mean... Oh, shoot, should I go Gust instead of freaking Wing Attack or what, folks? My gosh, that's ridiculous damage. Um, but the reason why I swapped into Machamp is because the first thing I saw was a normal type, so... It was to my surprise when I saw Gust, and I really kind of smacked myself over the head. So we have the... Typhlosion out here. So they go Brave Bird, and I'm like, okay, okay, I like that. And we're just going to farm down and go Solar Beam. Can we land this on the Jellicent? Hey, so we're going to go ahead and swap into our Pidgeot here. Great, sounds good to me. And we are going to let this go through. It is just a Bubble Beam, so they did reveal Bubble Beam and Shadow Ball. I would assume Shadow Ball. All right, so this is not the battle I was talking about that was going to be long and drawn out. It is going to actually be Pidgeot versus a Jellicent from the beginning. Somebody who doesn't switch out, you'll be able to see that uh, later down the line. So we're going to go ahead and quick move down. And we take the... Whoa! Getting a little bit of ahead of myself. <laughs> and we take the win. They still got a freaking full Pokemon in the back. It is a Toxic Croak though, so yeah. We're going to go ahead and swap to uh, remove those debuffs. And we get to a... Blast Burn. They, this is not going to be a good day for them. Surviving with 1 HP and getting off a of Blast Burn is so annoying. Or just a Pokemon surviving with 1 HP in general. Alright, so since we did lower the attack, we're still going to go ahead and shield this up. And go for another one. There's no need to go for a Brave Bird. Toxicroak is going to be very weak to flying. And then in comes their own Pidgeot. Actually thought I was going to lose this. Maybe thought this was going to be a Brave Bird here. But they hit me with a Feather Dance. And we take the win. Let's go. Alright. All right, so Gus Pidgeot is no joke. We just saw level 50 there. Now, this is still not the battle. Nope, yeah, they're going to retreat. Bringing in a Drapion, we're going to go ahead and swap into that Machamp here. Because we do resist the dark, they can spam us with Aqua Tail or hit us with a Sludge Bomb even. I do believe that's actually what they do. Yep, doing a lot of damage. At this point, I feel like I want to counter down. That's a pretty ambitious, right? So we're shielding this up, probably Aqua. Oh, Crunch. No defense drop, okay. So you got a shield out of me, but I'm loaded up on energy over here. All right, so let's get off these rock slides before they take us out. We have just a little silver of health, and we do not make it to the next rock slide, unfortunately. So bringing in the Pidgeot, instantly swapping into our Typhlosion as they swap. I didn't even 
try to see what it was. Um, all I know is Typhlosion doesn't want to go up against Jellicent, right? So we're bringing, I think this is a pretty incredible moment here for the Typhlosion. So we get off this Blast Burn. Okay, okay, okay. And we're going to get to another one here. Sounds good. We're going to get the last shield. There's no way we're, we can't get to another one. Nah. All right, this is good enough. We got another shield and that's all we needed to do. So yeah, that was good. That was great. In comes the Pidgeot here. They're not going to be hitting us with Earth Power, right? So they're only going to be going Poison Fang. It's not even a shadow, so we don't have to worry too, too, too much about the damage. Going to go for the Brave Bird here. Now, all right, let's explain. I'm going to explain to you how I screwed up. Did you notice something I should have done first before taking out that uh, Nido Queen? And did you guess yet? I'm going to tell you now. So what I should have done was build up extra energy. I left myself way too vulnerable out here with the double debuff on this Pidgeot. And we needed to do more damage. And uh, yeah, we could have gotten to a Feather Dance and potentially taken him out. So yeah, building up a little bit of extra energy on the Needle Queen would have helped us secure that win. But we're going down by Jellicent. Good game. Into the next one, we're going to be met with a oh, Galarian Stunfisk. So there you go. I was waiting for it. That's fine. Uh, you got to prepare for these things. If you're leading with something that you know you're weak to, you better have something in the back to cover them. So there it is, the Typhlosion. We're going to shield up the rock side. Could have survived it. Definitely. No problem. And they couldn't even have farmed us down. But I just did it anyway. So we're getting to another blast. We're putting a lot of pressure on here. Are we going to get another shield out of this thing? Okay. Beautiful. That sounds good to me. So at this point, we've gotten both shields. We're going to let this go. Earthquake, that's fine. No problem. We're going to go in here with Machamp. I would assume they have something in the back to protect themselves from it. And they may even swap immediately. And there it is, a Venusaur. So we're going to go ahead and bring in our Pidgeot and uh, do the Pidgeot thing. Looking good. And if they come back in here with the Galarian Stunfisk, guess what? We can Brave Bird and take it out. Yeah, Brave Bird is no joke, okay? Especially if you're getting stabbed. Going for the Feather Dance to lower the attack so we can absorb the next Blast Burn. Or, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the next Blast Burn from Venusaur. So the next Sludge Bomb. And without having to use our last shield, we need to hold on to that shield, period, okay? We're expecting the Galarian Stunfisk, so we're just going to go ahead and throw the Brave Bird. See what you got in the back there. Take them out, and it is going to be a... Oh, no, that's <laughs> this is good for us. Um, a uh, Galvantula. I don't know why I was spacing out on its name. We go for Rockside, and it essentially just takes it out in one shot. Into the next battle. This is a fantastic lead for once. Let's go up against the Salamence. So moves we have to look out for. Dragon Claw. That's pretty much it. They go for a Leaf Blade. Still does a pretty ridiculous amount of damage. Okay. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let this one go through as well. It is going to be a Dragon Claw. So they have revealed both moves. Okay. Sounds good to me. No Earthquake. Not that... Well, we kind of needed to worry about Earthquake on the Typhlosion. But our damage is so ridiculous. I don't even think that's a problem. So they have a Kyogre. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and throw the... Feather Dance and swap into Machamp and start going to town on this thing here. And we will be shielding this up. Yeah, and we're farming this thing down. That Well, that was the plan. And then they're like, ah, uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> good game. All righty. Let's go, folks. Let's get. I love this Pidgeot. It was a lot of fun. All right, here's the battle. I do believe this is it. Yep, this is the one. So here you go. This is what it looks like when you have a Pidgeot with Feather Dance and a Jellicent without Ice Beam. All right, so let's uh, take a look. Going for the first Bubble Beam. And now we're just going to Feather Dance back and forth. Now, Pidgeot will technically win this, inevitably, um, when it boils down to it. Uh, but it is going to be a very close-looking battle here. So back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. Are we really lowering their attack every single time? I do believe there's a cap on uh, four stages of the debuff. So technically, only two Feather Dances will will uh will go through am i wrong please tell me if i'm wrong uh, anyways they swap into their galarian stunfisk maybe trying to catch a flying move uh but we just swap into our machamp without throwing anything and i'm gonna easily let this earthquake go through and uh yeah we'll, we'll survive farm down and surviving barely with any health we should be able to get to a rock side here and fantastic oh we made it but they are gonna throw their energy which is fine by me we're just going to come right back in here with Pidgeot. So we do have the Typhlosion that does not want to have anything to do with the Jellicent. Unless shields are down. <laughs> and we can get off a high, Hyper Beam. Wow, I'm all over the place with saying wrong names. Pokemon and moves. If we can get off a freaking Solar Beam. Alright. So they're swapping into their own Pidgeot. We're going to go ahead and bring in our Typhlosion. And this one does have Hurricane. Pretty much everybody's going to be running Hurricane on their uh, Pidgeots. 
and we're going to go ahead and go blast burn here and we're letting this go through calling a feather dance i know we're getting a little bit brave our other our Pidgeot doesn't have the most health around. And now what, what they can do is just simply shield this up and just farm us down, right? So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. But they throw their energy here. And this is going to give us a massive advantage to take this win. Put a smile on my face. Maybe a little happy. So we're going to go ahead and throw the Brave Bird to take them out. There's nothing that Jellicent can do. Um, we're just simply going to keep shielding it up. And its Ghost Quick Move is resisted even though we lower our defense it doesn't really matter so they go for bubble beam and we, we're just going to go for brave bird here because feather dance i think would probably still not ko so there you go taking the win and still with the shield that pidgeot putting in that work into the next battle we're going to be met with a polytoad so since it, it polytoad itself didn't necessarily get debuffed but the move uh, weather ball did so that makes me really happy and i can tell the difference it was a little too bull bull crap before all right, if you're a Politoed fan and you liked it, nothing against you. It was just a, it's a, it was just nonsense, all right? It needed a little bit of a nerf. Every single thing with Weather Ball, including my Heisenberg Ninetales, all right? So they're swapping into a Snorlax. We're going to go ahead and bring him a champ, and you already know the rest is history here. And uh, I think we let this go. Oh, we're shielding it up, okay. Farming down. Okay, I think we felt comfortable in using a shield because they did as well. And the matchup up against Politoed is not bad at all, right? It's, it's a good matchup. It's fine. It's not good or bad. It's just neutral. Uh, so we're going to town here, and they're farming up. We're going to let it go. No problem. No problem at all. Weather Ball, you're not what you used to be. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I hated that freaking Politoed because of its spam ability. All right, so we're letting this go through, right? Sounds good. And we go in here, I think, with Typhlosion. Actually, no, we don't go Typhlosion because... The registration is so slow. I didn't know if they had built up energy, but they swap into a registeel, and as soon as they see my Typhlosion, they back out. We take the win. We're looking pretty good. All right. So another thing you can do with your Pidgeot when you're battling people, if they do retreat, and you can swap as well at this time, is go for Feather Dance, lower that attack, and you're going to be able to just absorb things with the Pokemon you do swap into, depending. Not unless you're really weak to it or something, right? But even then, you're taking less damage. So we're up against the Dragonite. Interesting. Never done this before. So we're going for the Feather Dance. Missing Bubbles. Gotta love that. <laughs> and now we're going to let everything go through. This is the power of Feather Dance for you, folks. All right. So they can't do anything anymore. Uh, they can shield this up if they want, but that's kind of a waste of a shield, I guess. And we farm down. Fantastic. We did use a shield ourselves. So uh, can't act like um, Pidgeot's godlike or anything. So we're going to go ahead and go Feather Dance onto the Greedent here. Since we do have Machamp, this is going to be a great matchup for us here. So we are going to easily let this go through. Body Slam will take us out. Okay. In comes Machamp with the two times lowered attack on that Greedent. Body Slam's going to chunk, but very slowly. They're going for the Crunch, maybe to get the defense debuff there, but there was nothing happening. And we resist it with the attack debuff. Wow, it really did nothing. Body Slam still really not doing much. They swap. We're going to go ahead and go for the Cross Shop. What are they swapping to? Sir Fetched. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, we don't necessarily need to get out of this. We're going to go ahead and throw another one of these here. And then I think swap now, right? Still holding on to a shield. Now we had to call this. Is it a Brave Bird or a Night Slash or a uh, Leaf Blade? A Brave Bird. So good call. So we're going to go ahead and farm down. They get to another charge. I'm thinking there's no way this is a Brave Bird. Has to be a Leaf, yep, leaf Blade. Not very effective. And then we have our charge move ready to go. We're going to go ahead and easily hit that right now. Typhlosion putting in that work. Taking the win up against a Greedent. Let's get it. Alrighty, this team was good, and this is the final product. Pidgeot, Machamp, Typhlosion. There you go. Next battle, we're met with a not good lead up against Lapras. We're going to go ahead and swap into our Typhlosion. Again, you don't want to go into your hard counters. This thing can handle it. We can take a Surf even. We resist the ice. We're going to be di dishing out a lot of damage with Blast Burn. So we're building up to two to see if we can get two shields. There's one. Do they want to double shield that Lapras? I mean, if you do, please do. All right, beautiful. We're not shielding this up anymore. We're going to let this go. And guess what? We're going to get to another Blast Burn. I think they actually it might swap right as we get to it. Yeah, they do to catch it. Uh, but this isn't resisted or anything like that. What is that? It's uh, Sylveon. Okay. So yeah, that's exactly what you would want to do. Go into battle and take out something that you don't necessarily want to be matched up against. So it's over with. And you're going to get farm, right? So that was a good play on their end. Uh, it's just some normal lag. And we're going to go ahead and lower that attack and easily let this go through. And by the way, on the topic of lag, 
I think I encountered it. Maybe somebody tried it once, but again, it's kind of hard to tell if you're experiencing regular lag or somebody doing the screen minimize trick. It's not even a freaking trick, glitch, exploit, um, scummy move to, to slow down the clock. Now, it's not necessarily like the worst situation in the world, but Niantic is going to fix it. Technically, they put out a thing they haven't acknowledged it. So this team was great. I enjoyed Pidgeot. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and I'll be catching you all next time. Take care, trainers.